Hey, what's up? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Brandon Laracuente is here. Party of Five coming back. What's going on, man? Good thank you for you. having me. Yeah, you thank it. you. So here you are with the squad here. Yes, yeah, so pretty that's cool the, moment um, for you. The fam. What was it like doing this whole thing, and why was this an important one for you? Because it's like you've done a bunch of different things in your career. What spoke to you about this one? Uh, I think more so for me, the one, the script, and two, what the script entails. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that this the topic of the show is so timely, especially with what's going on in today's climate. I think that's what really drew me in. What do you think was the biggest challenge for you? Because it's like this is meaty stuff we're dealing with. Absolutely. This is families being separated. These are people's lives being changed dramatically. What was the toughest part of it for you? Uh, I think for me it was just educating myself as much as possible on um, you know what 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 these uh, survivors you know these people in real life who are who are going through these uh, these tragedies what they're going through and and, and educating myself and, and trying to put myself in their shoes. At the at the end of the day, you know I'll never be them, mm -hmm. but just doing as much research and homework as we can. That way we can portray these characters accurately. Um, that was the biggest challenge for me. And also being that older brother and taking control of the family, mm -hmm. like that's not an easy deal, whether it's parents dying, whether it's parents being separated, like that's a whole new level of responsibility. So how do you get in that mindset to pull off a character like that? Uh, well, it, it was a bit tougher for me because I'm actually the youngest mm -hmm. out, of my, uh, out of my two siblings. Um, so it, it was... Uh, it was tough in that aspect, but I mean, being around these these uh, great people, I mean, it, it kind of just happened naturally and organically. I mean, the, from, from the moment we all met, uh, I just kind of took the role of like, I guess they all, they all call me dad because I'm always <laughs> like, guys, it's eight o'clock, it's time for my bedtime. You know, it's uh, I'm always taking naps on set and stuff. But it, everything happened really organically, and uh, nothing was forced. You know, it's. Everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. That's cool. Yeah, and I feel like for you, you've been around adults and other parts that you've done, and now mm -hmm. you get to be around kids. Like, how did you kind of translate those experiences to being more of a leader on this set? Well, I like like you said, I, I've always been the youngest out of every set that I've mm -hmm. you know been a part of, and uh, being being the eldest out of the uh, siblings here. Uh, I guess, in a way, subconsciously, I kind of just took what I learned, you know, and, and how the other actors and the other shows that I was a part of, like Bloodline and 13, mm -hmm. um, how they uh, conducted themselves on set. And I kind of brought that with me uh, unknowingly to this project. Yeah, I mean, Bloodline, the people that you're running around with, I mean, just, just an incredible cast. What do you take from that experience when you think about it? Oh, man. I mean, looking back, um, I, I've, I've learned so much. But uh, when I was there filming in the moment, I, I really didn't know who any of these stars were because, mm. you know, I was, I was younger. I think I was about 13 years old. Right. And my dad at the time, since I wasn't of age, he had to come with me every day to set. And he was just in awe of, you know, who <laughs> I was around. Sam Shepard, Sissy Spacek, Kyle Chandler, uh, Ben Mendelsohn. But uh, I look back and it was a, a beautiful moment. And I've learned so much since then and I hope I continue learning as I grow older and, and, and the more I work in this industry. Do you miss having dad on set? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He actually came to visit me on set of Party of Five mm. um, out, out in where we filmed in Santa Clarita, California. But I, I do. It was nice. That was like our bonding thing. Right. We would always like drive to the uh, either auditions together or to set together. Yeah, because the parents involved in stuff like this, like it's a, it's a long build for you. Even though Absolutely. you've been doing it since you were a kid, like Absolutely. you really put a lot of effort into it. So what's it been like for your family to see all the different successes you've had? You know, it's been nostalgic, um, but at the same time, we we reminisce a lot on, on how far I've come, you know, how far we've come. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't get here alone. You know, I got there with the help of my, you know, close family and friends and, you know, and their support. So uh, for me and my parents to look back and to see all the work that we've put in for me to get here, you know, and to be in this position where I am now, uh, I'm very grateful, and it's something that I uh, hold in high regard. So what were kind of the big moments for you to just to get to this level? Because it's one thing to pop into a couple shows, but it's Bloodline, it's 13 Reasons Why, it's Party of Five. Like, how do you kind of make those initial steps before you get here? Well, as, as any actor knows, it's a very long journey, you know, to get to, get to uh, you know, their first series regular role. And uh, it was just a lot of perseverance and, and a lot of, uh, you know, self-talks and, you know, looks in the mirror at myself and, you know, asking myself, you know, do I really want this? You know, because there there's a lot of rejection in this mm -hmm. industry. Um, as any actor knows, you know, you're going to be faced with a lot more no's than yeses. And it was a lot of phone calls to home, you know, I don't know if I can do this, you know, I should come back home. But it's, I think it's very important, and one, when you have family who also supports you and also a, a significant other who supports mm -hmm. your, your dreams, no matter how big or small they are. Yeah, you need that. You need somebody to be real with you, but you also need somebody to just say, like, yeah, keep going for it. You know, you're going to fail, you're going to get rejected, but that's just a part of the deal. Absolutely. I mean, I read books all the time. I, you know, I look up to people like, for instance, Derek Jeter. I read mm -hmm. his book, and his parents, I think from a very early age, he told his parents he wanted to be the shortstop for the New York yeah. Yankees. And I know a lot of parents who would tell their, their children, you know, that's unrealistic. I didn't have parents like that. Mm -hmm. I, told, I had parents who, no matter what I wanted to be, whether it was a doctor, an astronaut, an actor, a baseball player, 
uh, they said, yeah, you can do it. Now, this is the amount of work that's right. going to be required to get here, but you can do it. And Jeter's story is amazing. I mean, coming from Kalamazoo, Michigan, yeah. overlooked, certainly wasn't supposed to be a top guy, and then boom, he becomes an all-time great. Yeah, like, that's what it's all about. You put your head down and just do the work. Absolutely, and he's so well-respected, and that's that's somebody who I look up to because of, you know, how, how one, how long of a career he's had, but he's kind of kept his name out of, the, uh, out of the public eye. That's an important thing to do today, and it's a hard thing to do, especially, especially in New, New York, York City. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Who are some other people you look up to? Um, my parents, you know, I, I'm a huge believer in God, you mm -hmm. know, so God, and, and just, um, I try not to idolize anybody because I, I, I've come to the realization that uh, when you idolize people, you're disappointed. It's yeah. just, I have people who I look up to, and it, it's like for their, for what they do in their certain life, like for instance, uh, the way they um, parent their children, or the way that, that they are to their, you know, their partner, or the way they conduct themselves in the industry, and also people who I've worked with, you know, like for instance, Kyle Chandler, mm -hmm. you know, he he conducts himself in a very professional manner when I worked with him on Bloodline, and that's those are things that I take with me, you know, to my other jobs, like for instance, Party of Five, you know, I, tr I try and, uh, you know, um, just follow in their footsteps. Right, and also like with a faith in God, like all this stuff is great, but it's not the most important thing. It doesn't define you necessarily. Mm -hmm. So what's it been like kind of working through that where it's like the job is cool, this is awesome, but like there's more to this life than just that. Absolutely, and I think that's why that's why I do what I do. It's, it's not to get to the next step in my mm -hmm. career. It's just to be comfortable enough to where I can do what I love, but also spend as much time with the people I love, you know, as well. You know, it's it's finding that balance, and it took me a while. You know, living out in LA, um, I moved out of the house. You know, mm -hmm. it's my first time moving across the country, away from home, and I had to find that 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 perfect balance between work um, or career and family life. You know, and then for me, it's the gym. You know, for me, mm -hmm. it's doing anything physically active that kind of keeps my mind right. And you know, because I, I know a lot of people who just put a lot of precedence into work, 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 and they burn themselves out. Um, so it's finding that that balance. You know, I worked for about three or four months after Party of Five, mm -hmm. or during Party of Five, and then uh, quickly after that, I said, "That's it, guys. I'm going on vacation. I'm going to mm -hmm. go be visit my family." And I had some opportunities to either uh, work on some other projects sure. or to go across the country and do some uh, work there. But uh, I chose to visit my family because you know life is short, and I don't know when's the next time I'm going to be able to see them again. So it's just balance, man. And you can just really easily burn out, too, because you're fully invested in this. It's really emotional. It's mm -hmm. a lot of time. It's hard to go to the next thing right after that and then just jump into something new. You kind of need to put the brakes on, you do. I would imagine. You do. I mean, you know, now it's an, it, you know, now that it's, it's, it's the new year, I'll go back home after we do finish press here, mm -hmm. head back to L.A., kind of regroup and, you know, hit the ground running again. That's awesome. So what are some other things you'd like to do, just other areas you'd like to explore down the road? Uh, well, I've gotten into photography a lot lately, mm. and uh, I think directing is something that I, I, I see, I don't know about in the near future, I still have so much to learn, but I have had the opportunity to shadow many great directors who have worked on Party of Five uh, during filming season one. So that's something that, that's like a long-term goal for me, but uh, photography, I got my first camera. Mm. Uh, my fiance actually gifted it to me for my birthday last year, and I've been dabbling in that, so just exploring, uh, still staying on track, you know, parallel to the acting world, but um, just exploring new hobbies and interests that I have found. Yeah, I think it's important to have that range because photography can help you look at acting a little differently. Directing is another thing as well, so Absolutely. I'm sure you're pretty intentional about kind of plotting Absolutely. along there. Absolutely. Good deal. So when people check out the show, what are the big things you want them to take away from this? Um, that this show is about um, an average family, an average American family who's, you know, dealing with uh, the daily struggles that we all face. You know, like for instance, Beto's character, he's, he's Beto and Emilia, um, and, and I'm, I'm confusing Emily and Emilia, <laughs> Beto and Lucia, mm -hmm. you know, they're in high school and they're navigating, right. you know, the difficulties in high school and we've all been there. You know, Valentina, the, uh, the youngest set of the siblings, um, ex with the exception for the baby, she's, you know, she's growing up and her body's changing and she's going to need a, you know, a bra and, and, and a mom to get her through all those, you know, div new changes in, in, in life and whatnot. And then also, you know, Emilio, my character, he's, you know, he's, he kind of has to give up his dreams of being a musician and, Make, a, make, make the ultimate sacrifice, you know, and be there for his family. Uh, my dad, you know, that's where I kind of, I kind of take away things, you know, pertaining to my life and mm -hmm. I kind of bring them into the character. You know, my dad has done so much uh, and he's sacrificed so much for our family. You know, he went away after doing 20 years in the police department in New York City. He went away to this country called Kosovo for two years mm -hmm. and, you know, he sacrificed his life, you know, to, to, to buy our home in Florida. And so it's, it's I try and take away things, but at, at the end of the day, anybody who watches the show, male, female, young or old, you know, they're going to be able to relate to each and every character. Yeah, and it's just a good reminder that life doesn't always go as planned, no. whether it's a show or your dad's life or anything like that. We just got to be ready for the unexpected. Absolutely, you know, because I, I, when you plan, nothing goes according to plan. No, you know, nothing goes not. no. <laughs> so I just I think the the one of the greatest things that I've learned, especially living out on my own, 
is, you know, life's not always going to go your way, but learn how to roll with the punches. And when you do that, when you learn how to be water, as uh, Bruce Lee once said, you know, it's, you navigate through life a bit more um, effortlessly. Amen to that. Brandon, nice to meet you, man. Thank you, brother. Thanks so much. Yeah. Why don't you tell everybody when they could check out the show? Guys, Party 5 uh, has already premiered on Hulu on January 1st, but if you missed it, don't worry. January 8th on Freeform, the first and second episode will be premiering, so let me know what you guys think. You don't want to miss this one. For Brandon, I'm DJ. We'll see you again here see on ya. Sit Down.